You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others with the game. State your name for the record. Amari J. How did you come up with that name? Honestly, it's my real name, and I just, you feel me? I just kept the last uh, uh, letter of the initial in the uh, first part of my name. So since you're an RB singer, you wanted people to know your official name? Yeah, I mean, you feel me? It wasn't really like that. It's just because my, my first name is so unique, Amari, and then J, the letter J, I just put it together. So what, what got you into music? Shit, what got me into music was really, you feel me, my uh my family, the background I came from, you feel me, my, my pops, he was really on some, on some R&B shit, you know what I mean, on some R&B shit coming up, so, you feel me, and my grandmother and my uh grandfather and it was everybody on my dad's side of the family was into music, so all I hear in the house was R&B, so I just ran with it, and I was like, man, I'm trying to be a singer. I'm trying to, you feel me, do this music. So who's your biggest influence? My biggest influence? Uh, shoot, I have to say, uh, you know, it's it's a lot of people in the game that influence me, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a lot of great names out there, you know, from uh, Jermaine Dupree to uh, Whitney Houston to... Uh, you know, uh, The Temptations, Stylistics, OJs, uh, Marvin Gaye. I mean, you feel me? The list go on. Aretha Franklin. I mean, you know what I mean? Real legends, though. So you are you you write your own songs? Yeah, I write all my music. You write in it for anybody before? Yeah, I song write, too. I song write, too. I done, uh, wrote a couple songs with Ray J. I done wrote a couple songs with Bobby Love. So are you um, in a record label deal or anything like that? Or are you solo? Shit, I'm I'm so low. I'm so low with it. You know what I'm saying? It's YMP Entertainment. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my brothers. That's just a little thing, independent thing that we got going on. So, you feel me? Yeah. So, take us through a process of your music making process. Like, how you come up with writing material to laying it down on the track? Honestly, honestly, I just, uh, I, uh, I, I'm motivated from inspiration. So, and other motivations. So, if I see something that inspire me or motivate me to do something. I see something that I look, I think look clean or whatever. I'm going to just use that, you know what I'm saying? Like to inspire me to do something like it could be a simple song and I take that song and make a whole album out of it just because I'm that inspired by it. So, you know what I'm saying? that That's that's the first thing, you feel me? Because if it ain't no inspiration behind it, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I can't just get in the studio and, and just record anything. You know what I'm saying? It got to be a whole thought process behind everything, you feel me, a whole vibe behind everything, you feel me, uh, just everything, so then I go get a beat, holler at one of my producers, you know what I mean, go cash them out for a beat, you know what I mean, and then uh, I take it to the lab, you know what I mean, shout out DEO, I take it to the lab, you know what I'm saying, San Francisco, that's where I record at, you feel me, and uh, it is what it is, you feel me, and then we make a hit record or whatever we gonna do. So, uh... Since you're talking about inspiring, did Nipsey Hussle inspire you in your music in any kind of way? Uh, yeah, definitely did. Uh, Nipsey Hussle was a huge inspiration. Uh, I actually met his brother, Black Sam, you feel me, probably like uh, two, three years ago. You feel me? Uh, honestly, you feel me? I always used to drive by his store, you know what I'm saying, before he had passed and stuff like that. It was a couple of occasions. I, I just tried to sleep outside to try to <clears throat> see if I could find, bro. But I, I just never ran into him. But I came close. I ran into his brother, though. So you low-key got the stock in the store, nigga. <laughs> you a fool. <laughs> hell no. Hell no. I'm trying to, you feel me? I'm trying to present my music to him, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and work something out. Uh, I agree, man. That's that's that grind right there. Yeah, but Nissy Hustle, man, he was a uh, you know, what I mean, a legendary inspiration. You know, what I mean, to the whole music game. So you know, it was uh, just amazing to see his impact after his death, and just you know everything that he really stood for. How it came out the marathon. I mean, the whole clothing store, everything. You know, what I mean, it was just you know a monumental moment. You know, what I'm saying. So you know, uh, he always gonna be respected and well remembered in uh, where I'm from. So if you have any advice to give the people about being an R&B artist, man, what, what type of advice is it? Cuz is it different from the rap game? It's different from the <clears throat> it's different from the rap game. Yeah, it's real different from the rap game, you know what I mean? Uh it's still the music industry though, you know what I mean? So, you know, some things are, are the same, some things are similar, some things is different. Uh I rap sometimes too, but you feel me? I'm mostly on the forefront of this R&B. That's what I'm here to represent. But uh yeah, I say it's a difference, man. Uh for R&B, you know, it's not too many independent R&B artists 
versus how many independent rappers that it is in the game and how many independent rappers become successful off being independent versus R&B. Um, mostly everybody that's popping from R&B, they sign to somebody. They got a record contract or something like that. So you feel me? Uh, it's a different ball game because I'm, I'm independent with it. So it's a lot of things I'm doing differently than other R&B artists that even came out. They, you know, usually just give you an image and all this stuff like that. I, I got to do everything myself. So, you know, uh, I say just get your grind right. Get your money right. And, uh, you know what I mean? And uh, keep on going, stay motivated, and stay inspired because, you know, with, whatever you're going to do, that's what's going to get you there. You know what I mean? Hard work and dedication. Now, do rappers come at you sideways since you're R&B singer thinking you're a little soft or what? I mean, yeah, you know, I get into it. I get into it with uh, niggas, and I don't know if it's because of that, you know what I mean, per se. I, don't, I can't say that, but you feel me? Uh, you know, I feel like, you know what I mean, some motherfuckers might, you know, take that and just be like, man, Dude, 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 soft. I'm a try dude or something like that. But you know, I I come out every time and let y'all know. You know what I mean? That that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna go down. So so talk to us about the shooting at your video set, man. That's disrespect right there. Man, so you know, uh, like I said, I'm I'm in Northern California. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? I'm you know I'm in the Bay Area with it. So it's a lot of things that that go down. You know what I'm saying? Uh in the Bay Area, in Stockton, Modesto, just, you know, I, I'm, I'm clicked up with a lot of people, I, I do a lot of things, so we shooting a video, you know, we just doing our thing, you feel me, uh, my, my little bro, you feel me, shout out Ant, you know what I mean, we just dropped this new single today, making moves, you feel me, shout out Ant, so we shooting a video or whatever, and, uh, you know, we, we in the process of the video, we waiting for bro to come, so bro show up, boom, you feel me, everybody there, we about to shoot, and next thing I know, nigga, before we even start shooting, just start flocking. You feel me? Niggas just start flocking and shit. I'm like, oh, shit. You feel me? I, I, you feel me? To be honest with y'all, you feel me? I was the last nigga standing, though. You feel me? Like, I was still standing up, like, when everybody was ducking. Like, damn, nigga, this shit really happening? Like, you feel me? So I started ducking, too. I'm like, man, who got a gun? That's all I'm trying to figure out. But, you know, we, you know, we did what we had to do, and it was what it was. So you think uh, the beef with DB, the general, had anything to do with all that? Hell no. I don't think that had nothing to do with it all. Uh, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, I don't feel like that dude, you know, going to do anything like that to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what's your, your ultimate goal, man, to be in the music game? Like, is you want the fame or fortune? What's your, what's your mission, man? Once you do get signed, you blow up big. Uh, my mission is to uh, better my community, help the people that's uh, in the next generations coming up, help them to stay on the right path and stay on the right track because there's a lot of things that could drift you off into another direction. So, you know what I mean? It's just about turning negativity into positivity. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to do with my life, what I've been doing with my life, and I want that for other people as well. So, you feel me? Uh, black ownership. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's time to, you know, talk about a lot of things when it comes to uh, us as African Americans, as a race and community coming together and, and building foundations together and making things happen. So, you know, that's what I'm trying to do uh, is inspire the youth, uh, keep them motivated and, and just keep them ambitious and stuff like that. If I was to get to that platform and do that. So you're talking about black ownership. How does an artist or anybody come up with ownership? Um... Well, you know, it's all about it's all about working the system, how you could work it. And then, you know what I'm saying? Getting what you get and making something out of that is what I feel it is. Uh, people don't talk about black ownership that much. So that's something that I feel is important when it comes to your music and when it comes to uh, making investments in the music game to help your music and your money grow. You know what I'm saying? So which artists down the line would you like to collab with, man? Man, it's a lot of people I want to collab with. Um, you know, it's a lot of people I want to collab with, man. Uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, people out of California I want to collab with. It's a lot of people uh, in Atlanta, New York, you know what I mean, stuff like that. Uh, man, it's a lot of names, man. Well, let's, let's talk about how you hook up with Chris Brown production team. Uh, well, that came about because I honestly reached out to uh, somebody in their team, and they referred me to Bobby Love, and uh, Bobby Love, he um, – one of Chris Brown's main songwriters. He wrote the song Supposed to Be for Omarion, Janae Echo, and a few other songs by Chris Brown and Tiger and 50 Cent, stuff like that. So, you know, I just, I, I'm coming from Northern California. So what happened with that was 
bro told me to slide through. I'm like, uh, slide through where? I'm like, man, come to Compton. I'm like, all right. You know what I mean? They blood, so they call it Bompton. I'm like, all right, it's all good. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm sliding or whatever. I come through, you feel me? I meet the uh, a lot of motherfuckers in the whole gang and shit like that. Everything was cool, you feel me? So niggas kind of had uh, embraced me for a minute when I was working with them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I mean? Shout out Young Hated. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, shout out Biggs and... Um, Stuff like that, and uh, my nigga JB, man, 500. So, you know, it came about like that, and I just started kicking it with dudes. Next thing I know, Bobby Love said, man, I'm going to send you two records, you know what I mean? Because he was in the Bay fucking with E-40. I didn't get to meet 40, though, but me and Bobby Love, we ex exchanged records at that time. So, yeah, that's that's how that came about, though. Now, was you intimidated uh, meeting the gang culture of L.A.? Uh, I wouldn't say I would be intimidated. Nah, I wasn't intimidated at all uh, for the simple fact. This is what I do on a day-to-day. -day. No matter where I'm at in Northern California, what I do is go to every single hood and promote my music. I'll stay out there for three months at a time, go promote my music. Shout out Oakland. They showed me a lot of love. You know what I mean? I go to Oakland, Richmond, Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto, Fresno. I mean, whatever you, Santa Rosa, uh, San Francisco, all the shit. So it's like, you feel me? That's what I do on a day to day. So it was nothing for me to go to LA. That's what I've been wanting to do. Uh, and I wasn't intimidated by the gang culture at all. Cause when I came, they embraced me. Uh, they they just was fucking with my vibe. And you know they was they embraced me. You know what I mean? Well, let's talk about the million streams back in '07 that you didn't get no credit for. Yeah, uh, that was uh, 2017. I didn't get no credit for it, but you know it is what it is. We I did an uh, album called Young OG Three. You know what I mean? And uh, all together, streams, Spotify, YouTube, the uh, videos already got like 500,000 all together for that. So all the streams all together, yeah, that's a million streams, though, uh, in that year. Also, I dropped like 20 singles in that same year, though. So why why wasn't no credit given to you? Uh, You know, I don't know why it wasn't no credit given to me. I'm not, you know, but I'm not tripping off it. I'm not uh mad about it or nothing like that. You know, it happens. You know what I mean? So it, it is what it is. Uh, I, I ain't tripping off that shit, though. So you met and worked with a lot of people, man, like Ray J, Dog Pound, R. Kelly, just to name a few names. Why do you think your music ain't blew up yet? Um, my music ain't blew up yet because um, I'm, I'm, I'm on a marathon. I'm not on a race. I'm, I'm taking the stairs. I'm not taking the elevator. So that's why my music ain't blown up. I'm I'm still building my foundation and stuff like that, uh, uh, being an independent uh, household name. So that's that's all that is. Uh, you know, God got a plan for everybody. So, you know, I don't I don't feel like I'm not in a bad position, you know what I mean, or not in a good position, you know what I mean? So I feel like I'm in a good position. So, you know, I just got to keep on working. That's all it is, hard work, dedication. That's yeah, all. Yeah, I also see that you started your own clothing line, man. Talk to us about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me and my me and my brother, Charlie Money, you know what I'm saying, uh, that I grew up with, we had started a clothing line, you know what I'm saying, called Y&P, you know what I mean? That was our little label thing. He also got clothing line coming soon, you know what I mean? We ain't going to talk too much about it, but it's on the way. I'm going to make announcements for that uh, when I do. So, yeah, uh, you know, we just been, he kind of, he my brother, so he like a publicist to me also in a way because he give me a lot of game on stuff and, you know, talk to him about certain things and situations, we get it worked out. Uh, you know, he always with me too, he in the room right now. But you feel me, uh, that came about, you know, and uh, he's really the designer of the whole shit. You know what I mean? He 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 kind of like a black Sam to me. So like he come up with all these ideas, like as far as like business, and he always been a nigga with the bag. He always had money. You know what I mean? So that's why I call him Charlie Money. You know what I mean? He don't even like really when I call him that, but you feel me? He always had the bag though. So I call that nigga Charlie Money. So he he always had the brains behind the money. You know what I'm saying? So that's all that was. So where would they be able to find this merchandise? The what? So Instagram.com. You feel me? Official Amari J. You know what I'm saying? We'll DM me, whatever. We going to get it done for you. So what what happened with the situation when you met Adam from No Jumper? Oh, man. Yeah, I met, man, I was on Melrose. I was on Melrose, and uh, I'm walking. I'm, I'm, I'm slapping uh, my music and everything. I'm slapping some uh, music, and I'm like, man, this the, uh, this the store right here that bruh, that bruh owned. So I said, all right, I'm going to double back around the block real quick. Double back around the block. Just, you feel me? Walked around and then seen bro again. I mean, seen bro. No, I seen bro for the first time. But it, literally, he was walking out when I'm walking past. So it, it was like 
You feel me? Perfect. So I'm like, what's up with it? You feel me? We shake hands, everything. Tell him who I am. Give him my music. Uh, and that, and he took the CD, you feel me? Stuff like that. And uh, later on, he had put me in the end of one of his vlogs on YouTube. And uh, At the end, when I uh, gave him the CD and everything, <clears throat> uh, he said, J. Cole has stopped by. That's the name of the blog. It's like a, thir a, a million views on that motherfucker or something like that. Over a million views on that motherfucker. Yeah. And shout out to Adam from No Jumper though. So how um why do you feel that Cali ain't accepting Bay Area artists, man? I mean, I you know, I wouldn't say that, but you know, I would say that uh, you know, California it's a gap between the Bay Area and LA. That's all I would say. It's a gap between that. And what's between the gap, man? Shoot, it's 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 not <clears throat> it's not a lot of artists clicking up, I feel like in the streets, you know, uh in LA and the Bay Area together, you know what I'm saying? As far as like street movements, I was watching uh, a Hood TV vlog and uh, I believe his name was like Loke or something. He was, he was a Long Beach Crip. He was like, man, shout out to them Bay niggas. You know what I mean? Uh, they out there doing their thing, man, getting money. I'm trying to fuck with y'all. I'm trying to fuck with y'all. Just me seeing that was like, man, we need some more unity. You know what I mean? We need, we need some more unity. It's things we could all take from each other and, and maybe put this shit together and, and make California unstoppable just like Atlanta is. That's all I'm saying. Is the Bay Area gang culture similar to L.A.? Well, you feel me? <clears throat> it's real different. It's real different. You feel me? In the Bay, like, we ain't really on some gang shit. Like, you know what I mean? We're not banging no Crips and Bloods and stuff like that. Like, that ain't the culture of where we from. You feel me? Like, so it's like, you know, with the whole gang culture, it's like L.A., they on some, you know, gang shit for real, for real. Or Sacramento, they on some gang shit for real, for real. We on some, like, clicked up shit. We, we clicks and street clicks and stuff like that. We funking with niggas two, three blocks down the street. You know what I mean? Uh, where I'm from and shit, it's like if you from another side, you, they, just, they, they just killing you off top. You feel me? They just killing you off top just because you from that side. You know what I mean? But it's not a color. It's not like we Crips or Bloods and nothing like we just, you know, we we certain clicks. Like we just click on this block, then we, the, then we just click on this block. And then, you know what I mean? We might be beefing. We might be a few blocks down from each other, whatever this shit is. You feel me? Just like how it is in a lot of hoods. Well, though. since y'all ain't got colors repping, y'all, is it easy to blend into the other block? What you mean? Like, say you're walking down the street and you're in somebody else's hood. They can't identify you because you ain't got red or blue on. Is it easy to, to blend in? I mean, I mean, I wouldn't say that because niggas going to know you by your face. You know what I'm saying? And know you by your face and, and who you kicking with and who you associated with. Oh, that's that nigga. He fuck with them other niggas. Boom. You get what I'm saying? That's how it work like that. So basically, the more popular you are, the more dangerous it is for you. It, it, could, it could also be that way, too. But, I mean, it's kind of like, you feel me? It's kind of like n niggas just be knowing that you from somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just be knowing that that nigga from the sucker side. You get what I'm saying? I'll, it just be like that. You feel me? It just be like that. So so where are you from? Shoot, I'm from Northern California. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Bay Area. You know what I mean? I was born in the rich, the riches. And uh, then I moved to Vallejo. You know what I'm saying? And I've been uh, moving around. Ever since, you know what I mean, all over California, you know what I mean, from L.A. to motherfucking almost up to Oregon and shit, just, you know what I mean, Oakland, all that shit, so, yeah. So, you, you fuck with the, um, Young Gully up there, man? Yeah, 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 man, that's 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 my nigga right there, you feel me? Uh, that's my brother right there, so shout out Young Gully, you know what I mean, his music is real impactful, uh, he on some real, you know what I mean, real shit with that shit, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, I can honestly say he like, you know, to me, uh, uh, the Northern California Nipsey Hussle, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't got too many niggas where I'm from that that's rapping like that, you know what I'm saying? And really trying to tell a story and, and, and inspire. Exactly, yeah. So, well, 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 who's Mike Dre, man? Well, how's it? I thought he was a North legend out there. He is a North legend. He's always going to be a legend forever. That's for sure. He always going to be a legend forever. You know what I mean? I was just talking about, you know what I mean? Young Gully and his own legacy, but you feel me? Everybody got their own legacy, but that's, that's, you know what I mean? A legend off top, off top. Well, let's talk about the Heartbreak Hotel album record, man. Man, it's good. So, you know what I mean? I just put that album together. You know what I mean? Today, the anniversary of that album, it's been one year, you know what I'm saying? So today, the anniversary of that album, Heartbreak Hotel, uh, biggest single on there is She Know. 
you know what I'm saying, featuring my brother again, Charlie Money. And uh, basically what we did was we shot a video to it and everything, so that'll be coming soon. Uh, we shot that shit in Vegas, uh, shout out CM Deluxe. And so, you know what I mean, we just did our thing. So, uh, yeah, man, we, we came about the album, no, uh, just for the simple fact, Michael Jackson had dropped a song called Heartbreak Hotel, and then Whitney Houston had dropped a song called Heartbreak Hotel. So all this shit kind of just went together, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, you know, just with my life too though and, and and what i had going on so it just everything went together so well i'm like man we just gonna call this shit heartbreak hotel and so i i had the albums instead of track one track two track three you feel me i had the floor one floor two oh you know what i mean floor three all the way up till 10 going backwards though on the album you know what i'm saying so you know the creativity behind that album was you know what i mean some that was real, you know, thought about and well put together. So, yeah, man. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to everybody that was a part of that album, too. You feel me? So, you brought up Whitney Houston, man. You believe she really died over crack? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. And I don't even, you feel me? I don't even really like when people say that shit. You feel me? Because I don't feel like, you feel me? That's what it was. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, I mean, she admitted what she did herself. So, that's all I got to say. You feel me? She spoke for herself. Would you find it a big coincidence that her daughter passed away the same way? You think the murderer just repeated the crime since he got away the first time? I don't believe that it was the same person or something like that. I don't know nothing about that. You feel me? I don't know nothing about that. You feel me? I don't know who did it or what happened or nothing. You know what I'm saying? All I know is that, she, you feel me, Whitney Houston died in the Beverly Hills Hotel. And that's all I know. Somebody well, should have well, been there. Y'all RB niggas know all the RB news, man. <laughs> I don't know all the R&B. No, I'm focused on what I, you know what I mean? What I got going on, the R&B shit I'm trying to do, you know what I mean? So, you know, there's so many distractions out there and shit. So, yeah, I'm trying to focus on what I'm doing. I hear little things here and there, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's what it is, yeah. So let's let's go back to the Bow Wow Studio, man, when you was linking up with Pyro Mills. Yeah, no, yeah. So, yeah, I clicked up with Pyro Mills. Uh, We clicked up probably like five five years ago or something maybe two three years ago or something like that we clicked up uh first time i even went to la you know what i'm saying he brought me in chris brown studio bow wow studio you know what i mean where they all record at they wasn't in there he brought me in there we did a couple tracks we did just like computer love i got to meet uh some good producers motion motion on the uh, track and stuff like that so you know i linked up with him uh and then after that i was introduced to more of the gang culture in LA and stuff like that like you know what I mean a lot of niggas in the band stuff like that you know we say blood and cuz you feel me that's just how we talk you know what I'm saying in, in LA though the bloods they say certain words you feel me and in the crips they say certain words you feel me so when I'm around some bloods I'm 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 not really I'm I'm not I'm from the base so I ain't really in that category so they ain't really tripping if I did call them cuz but I just been around them so much I don't even say cuz to them. You know what I'm saying? I, if I'm if I'm around a crip, that's what I'ma say. You get what I'm saying? Uh just because I've been around niggas so much, you know what I mean? So, you know, shout out to my nigga Trey though from Rolling Sixties though, you know what I mean? That's a real uh OG nigga though. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Do you still song songwrite for other artists? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I still songwrite for other artists. I do little hooks here and there. Uh, verses, whatever you need, so come holla at me. So who's one of your favorite songwriters? One of my favorite songwriters, to be honest with you, I feel like uh, bro don't get enough credit, you feel me? Uh, Dark Child and uh, that's Rodney Jerkins and uh, and Jermaine Dupri, you feel me? Because one, Jermaine Dupri, he a rapper and done produced hella R&B shit. I feel like he don't get enough credit, though. Then, then Dark Child, man, that nigga done produced, you already know, that nigga done produced Half of Destiny's Child old shit to Danielle Jones to motherfucking, you feel me? Anybody you can name, Usher, I mean, that nigga done wrote songs for everybody a part of the R&B music game, period. And niggas don't even know who that is. Every time you hear that on a track, it be like on a track, you hear Dark Child. Niggas don't even know. You feel me? That's, that's that same nigga that done wrote all that shit, though. So, yeah, that, that's definitely my favorite songwriter, uh, him and uh, Jermaine Dupri. So um, let's go to the the meeting you had with Atlantic Records, man. How, what happened in that situation? Uh, what happened with that was, you know, what I mean, you know, basically, uh, we was doing a lot of uh, we was doing a lot of uh, shipping around, 
trying to uh, ship our sound and ship our product to to one of these record labels. And I got lucky enough to meet somebody that could get me in the door. So basically all it was was that I got in the door, had a meeting, uh, had a couple meetings uh, with a lady. The, her name was Kanisha. I had a couple meetings with her. You know what I mean? I was trying to holler at uh, Dallas Martin, though. You feel me? The vice president, though. You feel me? But I, I just never really got to the next level of that. So we was getting to, you know, the contracts and stuff like that. Everything just didn't fall through how it was supposed to. So, you know, at the time, it just wasn't the right time for me to uh, present my music to him. So I'm going to come with another project, you know what I mean, and present this one to him and see how they fucking with it. And since you're an R&B singer, man, let's talk about the king of R&B, man, R. Kelly, man. How how that situation affect you, him going to jail and him with all these little girls and stuff like that? Man, you know, that, that shit is crazy, bro. You feel me? I don't, I don't even know nothing about that, though. You feel me? That shit is just crazy. You feel me? Uh, You know what I mean? I ain't got nothing to say really about that situation. You know what I mean? I ain't going to go too deep into that. You know what I mean? I met that man one time and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Uh. And that's what it was, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to go too in, into depth about that. Uh, all I got to say is protect your kids. And as an R&B singer, do you still go back and listen to his music for reference and try to add on, or do you just cut him off? Um, you know, I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say any of that, you know what I mean? I don't have no comment on that, really, you feel me? To be honest with you, I don't even have no comment on that. So let's, since you got comments, let's talk about any projects you got going out right now. Yeah, man, shit, I just dropped a new single. It's called Making Moves. It's on iTunes right now. This my nigga, uh, Ant, you feel me? It's his song. It's his single featuring Karan and me, my nigga Karan, Modesto Crip, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? We just linking up and, and stuff like that. Shout out to that nigga because he doing this thing too, you know what I mean? Ant, though, you know what I mean? We did this little record, uh. We shot the video, shot out 400 HD films out of Modesto too, you know what I mean? Uh, and he out of, uh, he out of, out of the Bay Area, California, you know what I mean? Uh, Vallejo, so you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, we just rocking and rolling, man, you know what I mean? So, you know, it is what it is. All right, man, um, before we roll out, man, can you have a little, sing us a little something for the audience? Hell no. Just like a RPC, huh, man. You got the auto tunes <laughs> on your point? That nigga a fool. Hell no. I just, man, my shit rusty and dusty right now, boy. I ain't even going to lie to you. You know what I mean? I'm on some rap shit today. Man, somebody told me, man, that shoot out your video shoot was about the, you selling some dirt ass weed. Man, I ain't even trying to talk about that shit, bro. You feel me? I ain't got nothing to do with nothing, nigga. I ain't doing none of that. So did you bust back or was it some dirty ass weed? Man, I did, I, it wasn't none of that, bro. You feel me? None of that went on. So you feel me? Like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, snitching on myself. I'm not finna snitch on myself, bruh. So you feel me? It's all good. I'ma just slide up out of here. You feel me? Shout out Grind Face TV. And you know what I mean? It is what it is. Grind Face.